Odell Beckham Jr. was ruled out of week seven of the NFL season after injuring his left knee on this play in the first half. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Odell's left knee injury here, walking through the footage, some of the anatomy, and then some key pieces of evaluating an injury like this. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, please consider subscribing and be sure and go follow me over on Twitter for more real-time breakdowns and analysis and let's get started. Initially, Odell was questionable to return, which is certainly a more positive sign, but then was downgraded to out before the first half ended, and I'm making this video now at halftime of the game. So keep an eye on his left leg and foot here as we go through the sequence. We can see his left foot comes and initially makes contact here with his heel in the ground, and then as his momentum carries him forward, we can see that left foot start to slip on the field, and as it slips, he gets a little bit of inversion here in his ankle with it turning inward, but then if you look back up at his knee, we can clearly see a little bit of excessive movement here in Odell's knee as he kind of goes into this position. Now there's some key positions of his body here that we need to point out that are relevant to this discussion when we talk about his biomechanics. The first is if we look at his hips and his upper body, he's actually rotated to the right a little bit. So we're not looking at him directly straight on from behind here. This means that whenever we see on this footage that it looks like his knee is collapsing inward, which of course everybody worries about with the ACL, it's not truly a valgus position entirely because of how his hips are rotated a little bit. So there is some valgus movement there with the knee bending inward, but you've got to look at the rest of his body and see that he's rotated to the right a little bit, which is going to cause any forward motion of that knee to look a little bit like his knee's caving in. So I think that fools us just a bit. The other important thing here is the position of his foot. Now, the kind of classic non-contact HCL tear position is when the foot is a little bit externally rotated outward and the knee collapses inward. Here, if we look through the sequence, Odell's toes are actually pointed inward. So his lower leg, his tibia, is a little bit internally rotated. And again, we've got to look back up at his hips because here his hips are also rotated to the right. So everything is a little bit more in that sagittal plane in terms of the movement. Let's watch this back continuous to see again that positioning of that foot pointed inward a little bit, but still we see a little bit of kind of inward falling of that left knee, just that slight little bit of shift. I think it's also helpful to look earlier in this whole sequence at a different angle. So here Odell is coming in from the side. And again, it's this left leg and knee we're worried about. And he makes contact with his leg in a pretty straight position. Again, with that heel being the first part of his leg to make contact with the ground. But then as he tries to stop, that's when his foot basically slips on the grass. You can see all that marking from where his foot has slid. We can see that inversion of his ankle, which is probably what prompted him to kind of come up in the air and take that load off. And it's important to see just how kind of forward his knee is from the rest of his body here in this position. It kind of throws you off to see this view compared to the other one that we were looking at earlier when he's all the way here. In this position, it looks like his leg is a little bit more under him than it truly is. And I certainly hope he's avoided an ACL tear, but anytime we see movement in the knee like that with a non-contact injury, you gotta have an ACL tear on your differential. I think there's some good stuff going for his biomechanics though that make that less likely on my list, particularly the fact that that foot is rotated inward as opposed to outward, which limits the degree of that dynamic knee valgus falling inward. Also knowing that his hips are a little bit more rotated here. But again, we'll have to see. I'm not ruling anything out here and we gotta wait for the official diagnosis after the game. One key thing that helps the medical staff during the game with determining a possible ACL tear is gonna be their exam. And it's really important to do your physical exam as early as possible, which is why we often see them doing it on the field in these situations. That's because with an ACL tear, the knee develops an effusion, which is basically swelling inside the joint of the knee. That effusion can set in very quickly and then once it's there, the knee gets really stiff and it's hard to get a good accurate exam. So within the first five to 10 minutes, the medical staff has done a good exam of Odell and has an initial sense of how well they think his ACL is right after the injury. They're also gonna assess the other ligaments in his knee and do some meniscal type testing. So there's a pretty comprehensive evaluation that's trying to occur as soon as possible after one of these injuries. One little teaching point in sports medicine, there's really three things we think about that would cause an acute or immediate onset knee effusion or swelling. Those three things are an ACL or a PCL tear, a patellar dislocation, and a tibial plateau fracture. That's because if we look at our anatomy here on the knee, all of those structures are 
inside the joint capsule, they're intracapsular. This lining that I have highlighted here is the joint capsule, and you can see how it surrounds the entirety of the joint. But there's a couple of key structures that are outside of the capsule, including the LCL here on the outside of the knee, and the MCL here on the inside of the knee. This is why when someone has an MCL injury, we don't see a big knee effusion because that structure sits on the outside of the joint capsule. But now, of course, if we get rid of our joint capsule and look at the structures inside of the knee, that's where we're gonna see our ACL, our PCL, and our two menisci. Another important lesson here as we go back to the actual injury itself, this is a key reason why ACL prevention programs and just prehab for any type of injury is really important because of how we try to train the surrounding muscles to prevent injuries like this. Whenever Odell plants here and his ankle starts to shift from his foot sliding, all of this instability originates down at the foot and then starts to carry up his leg up the rest of that lower kinetic chain. What his body is trying to do in this position is fire his quadriceps, fire his hamstrings, fire his hip muscles to try to stabilize the knee as best as possible. But if you don't have that trained really well and you don't have good neuromuscular control there, then your knee is gonna have more freedom to move around and be unstable. These muscles that sit on the outside of your hips called your hip abductors are the muscles that are extremely important in preventing that knee from falling inward. So in this split second kind of moment here when Odell plants and lands, he has just a snap of a finger for those muscles in his leg to try to fire to stabilize and help protect the ligaments and the soft tissues within his knee. And it's so quick that it has to just be automatic and trained into an athlete. He plants, boom, everything's trying to fire in that little moment to help prevent injury. So we'll see what the final word is on Odell. You know, typically in these situations, we usually have something leaked by the end of the game because our exams are pretty reliable. There's a whole list of other things that could be on the differential here, including an MCL injury, meniscal injuries, and so on. So I don't wanna to get too far speculating what I for sure think it is or what I for sure think it isn't. I just wanna give you some additional context to kind of movement patterns and what we think about with things like the dreaded ACL. I'll leave an update down in the comments when we have official word, but hopefully this teaches you a little bit more kind of in to the medical aspects here going on for Odell. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.